What is going on, you guys? Alex Chasen back here with a brand new video, and let's just dive right into things. The 2024 NBA Finals have started, and the Boston Celtics are up 1-0 in the Finals. What a fabulous game for the Boston Celtics, a full-on display of what they are capable of in the biggest moments. For Dallas, not so much. Their overall powerhouse of a run in the Western Conference fell a little short last night. Now, I know in the first series against the Clippers, in the second series against the Thunder, they lost game ones, and they ultimately won the series. Against the Timberwolves, of course, they dominated that series. But in the first two series, the Mavs were down 1-0. So let's not overreact to this in any way, shape, or form, but there are so many positives for the Boston Celtics. And even though let's not overreact, there are negatives for the Dallas Mavericks because the Celtics... They had Porzingis come back, and he closed off one of the biggest threats for the Mavericks, that being that lob threat. So we'll discuss that in today's video. But first off, I was at last night's game, and I got this sick shirt, the 2024 NBA Finals throughout the video. I'm probably doing it right now while I'm editing. I'll put up some pictures of the game last night. I got a couple other things that I'll show at the end of the video, but I just wanted to show you this shirt real quick again. I'll show you some a few other things at the end of the video. So hopefully you stick around. And let's just talk some ball right now. The Boston Celtics. 107 to 89 victory. In that third quarter, I'm not going to lie, I got a little bit scared. Some of my friends who are Dallas Mavericks fans, they were like, you getting scared right now? We're coming back. We're down like, it was, it was like mid third quarter. They were down like eight or six. I think it was like eight. Luka was on a little bit of a tear. Kyrie never was on a tear, but PJ Washington and Luka were kind of going back and forth a little bit, bringing this game a little closer, but not even really PJ Washington. He was just the only other role player, or really the only role player who had anything significant last night. He had like 14 or 15 points. But Luka in that mid-third quarter made things pretty interesting, and they were rolling barely, but a little bit. Made it close, Celtics caught a timeout, and then they finished that job into that third quarter going into that fourth quarter. But let's just talk about Chris stops Porzingis because that was the interesting piece coming into the series. He has not played since April 29th when he had that calf Achilles area injury. They were really holding him out. Were they just holding him out for the moment like this? Or is he really still injured throughout the whole playoffs? We'll, we'll never know. My conspiracy theory is that he was probably healthy a lot longer, but they were just holding him out until they needed him. That being into the finals, there's no backing on that. I just, based off last night's performance, I think this man's been healthy for a little bit. At first, he did look a little bit gassed. And in the end of the game, he looked a little bit gassed. But he never looked like he was laboring on his calf, ankle area, his Achilles area. He never looked like he was in any pain or struggling to run. He just looked gassed because he hasn't played NBA minutes in over a month. This isn't a regular season game where you can kind of dog it a little bit. All 48 minutes are tough basketball. Even in a blowout win like this, the whole game, the Mavericks never stepped down until obviously the last like four or five minutes when they obviously had no chance. But Luka kept driving. He kept trying to do his thing. But Kristaps Porzingis, his impact, he closed off one of the biggest, if not the biggest threats for that for the Dallas Mavericks team. The lob threat. Coming into this series and in this entire playoffs, I was like, Gafford and Lively are the X factors of this team. Of course, you got Luka and Kyrie. And one of them will pop off, that being Luca, who still had his 30 points and he shot the ball well, but he had one assist. Again, I'll talk about that in a second, but let's just stick off, stick with this lob threat real quick, real quick. Gafford and Lively dominated the Clippers, dominated the Thunder, dominated Defensive Player of the Year, Rudy Gobert and the Minnesota Timberwolves. I was scared of that. I thought Gafford and Lively would dominate Porzingis, would dominate old but still good Al Horford, dominate Luke Cornett in any little minutes he got. He only played the back end. I thought maybe they'd throw him in a little bit. They didn't until the game was sold and they sold and they got the win. But Horford and Porzingis played all those minutes as, at big man, and they never seemed to struggle. Porzingis dominated blocking that lob threat, and that was probably one of my biggest impressions of this game was yes Porzingis looked fabulous on offense he had a role in the first quarter where he got like 10 points whatever it was it was scary the unicorn was alive but the defensive end for Kristaps Porzingis I think is even more important for the Celtics team three blocks three blocks but also just his presence at the rim you don't see that on the stat sheet he was deterring the lob threat we have not seen that for the Dallas Mavericks this entire playoffs Lively and Gafford were basically non-existent, especially Lively. He got his only two points in like the second half. He had five rebounds. 
He did nothing in 18 minutes. Gafford played 14 minutes. He had eight points, three rebounds. He did really nothing as well. As well, They were so insignificant that they only played 18 minutes and 14 minutes, and they were just trying to run other rotations with Maxi Kleba, Josh Green. They were trying to just make a small ball lineup to try to compete with the Celtics, but that small ball lineup never worked because Kristaps Porzingis was just shooting over Derrick Jones Jr., shooting over P.J. Washington, shooting over Josh Green. They have no answer for Kristaps Porzingis. That was my biggest takeaway from this game. And I haven't even touched on Jason Tatum. I haven't even touched on Jalen Brown. I haven't even touched on Derek White, Drew Holiday. The Boston Celtics, I never thought it was going to be so important for Kristaps Porzingis to be playing healthy. Obviously, I knew he was a huge factor. He is one of the X factors. But the way he denied the lob threat for the Dallas Mavericks, and he just denied them even being on the court because he made them so insignificant. This whole Celtics team made Lively and Gafford non-existent in the Mavericks game plan. And if those two guys are taken out of the game, this is going to be a five-game series for the Boston Celtics. I don't see a sweep. I'm not going to be stupid. I don't see a sweep. The Mavericks will get a game because Kyrie and Luka. Kyrie struggled last night, but he's not going to struggle a lot again. Luka still got his 30 points, shot the ball well, but had one assist. Another thing that Boston Celtics did amazing. I have never seen such a game plan to deny the passing lanes. Luka couldn't find anyone open. For example, I, I, I could vividly remember this. The whole game, whoever was on Kyrie, but specifically when I saw Al Horford on Kyrie, he would block him in the corner. He would face guard him in the corner. So if Luka drove and kicked, there was no way he was getting it to the corner for Kyrie Irving because no one was biting, biting on that, and he could not kick it to Kyrie because he was getting face guarded, stuck in a corner. And the, also the off-ball movement by the Mavericks was really not good at all. That's something they'll probably fix going into the next game because it might help these issues a little bit, but still, he was face guarding Kyrie and not letting them get anywhere. There was no drive and kick opportunities for Luka, and that's why he got one assist. Again, he played 38 minutes, so he was out there the whole game, basically, had one assist. That's game planning by Joe Mazzula and the Boston Celtics. That was fabulous. I have never seen them deny passing lanes like that. The steals they got last night, it was just a fantastic game. They had how many steals last night? They had... Only six steals. They seemed like they had way more. I think it was just because they were denying passing lanes and causing turnovers. So great game plan by the Boston Celtics, but it's just one game. It means nothing. The Dallas Mavericks might win game two, and I do not expect another lousy performance for Kyrie Irving. And what was funny was in postgame, he was like, I was expecting the crowd to be louder than that. You can't really say that when you had 12 points on six for 19 from the field. That not really your place. Even if you lost the game, but you still dropped 30, I could I could listen to it. But you dropped 12 points, 6 for 19 from the field, and you're 0 for 5 from 3, and you're saying the crowd wasn't as loud as I expected? Come on, Kai. I will say, though, since I was there, there were not as many, you know, F Kyrie chants or Kyrie sucks chants as I thought. I'm off the Kyrie sucks. I said that in my preview video. Yes, it's a storyline, but... Kyrie Irving has earned some of my respect back because he seemed like a changed man, quote unquote. And he's just so damn good at basketball. It's like, I'm not, I'm not going to, it's been so long since he was a Boston Celtic. I'm over it. It's water under the bridge. It just keeps moving. We're good. But to say that and then just have like a crappy game, I just think that I thought that was kind of funny about Kyrie. Maybe the crowd did get to him. But again, I didn't really think it was overly hatred toward Kyrie. It was really loud in there for the game, but no. It was only like four instances where the crowd was like, Kyrie sucks or Kyrie, you know, effing sucks or whatever. But it wasn't like a whole stadium thing. It was like half of it. It wasn't very overwhelming. So Kyrie is just kind of speaking whatever there. But yeah, this Dallas Mavericks team, besides Luka, it really was P.J. Washington. And then again, Jaden Hardy, 11 minutes, 13 points. But most of those came in garbage time those last couple of minutes. He was just driving to the rack, pulling it up, whatever. Cool. But yeah. Game plan needs to be fixed for the Dallas Mavericks because the Celtics figured out a way to deny their two biggest threats after Luka and Kyrie, Gafford and Lively. It has not been done this entire playoffs. Zubac couldn't do it. Chet Holmgren couldn't do it. The defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, couldn't do it. And I think it's because, yes, Chet Holmgren can space the floor, but he's still a rookie. He's nowhere the level of Porzingis or Al Horford. It's those guys space the floor. And Lively and Gafford aren't really perimeter defenders and they were kind of taken out of the game because of that on the defensive end. And on, on their offensive end, Porzingis was just denying any opportunity at the rim. Or he was blocking it. Three blocks. 
I swear he had more blocks than that. I mean, I believe it. And then Jalen Brown's defense last night was impeccable. Looked like an all-NBA defensive player. He's really done that the entire playoffs, but it was awesome last night to see that from Jalen Brown. And I never touched on JT because his game was, it was there, but he didn't need to drop 30. He had 16 points, 6 for 16 from the field, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, 6 turnovers isn't great. It was kind of just an average, not even average. His average is way higher, but more just like a, Whatever game for JT, he was there, hit some big threes, hit some good shots, but he didn't need to because Jalen Brown, Porzingis, they were the main guys last night. And I think Jason Tatum, one of a big growth in his game is that he doesn't have to be that number one guy every night. I know the media wants him to be, Stephen A. Smith, all of ESPN, all of TNT, they're like, Jason Tatum sucks if he's not dropping 30. But it's the fact that, and I see this same game in Anthony Edwards, he can drop. 11, he can grab 11 rebounds, drop eight assists, and score 16 to 20 points, and that's a good night for him. He doesn't have to be that number one guy. We saw that kind of growth in Anthony Edwards in these playoffs. He didn't have to drop 40. He almost averaged a triple-double in most of those rounds, and I see the same thing from Tatum, who is obviously way farther on that growth, where if he's getting some assists, getting rebounds, making plays on defense and overall, a win's a win. He's still the best player on the team, but it doesn't have to be him every night when you have guys around him who you can trust. Past years, Jason Tatum would force shots. He'd force bad shots, force himself into tough situations, double teams, and then they're, they're kind of screwed. But he was able to make the smart play to Porzingis, smart play to Brown, smart play to White or Holiday, whatever it was, and they, they won because of that. So great game by Jason Tatum overall. I know it wasn't that star-studded game, but up here, in the mind, good game for JT. I got to give him credit for that. Great game again for the Boston Celtics in general. And they're up 1-0. I do expect a major shift in the Dallas Mavericks. Obviously, they can't just have guys come out of poof and have random new guys on the team. But they're still going to have to run Lively and Gafford. But it's going to be interesting to see if they run it differently or what they do. Because they were useless last night. And that's because of the Boston Celtics. But I do expect the Mavericks to have a much better game. Luka's not going to have one assist. I mean, maybe he will. I don't, know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But Kyrie specifically, he's not going to suck again. And they're going to have to be ready for that because it's early. Anything can happen. So that's all I got to say about the game. Great game. I got this shirt last night as well. It's actually for my buddy. He wanted a shirt. He's in Greece right now, living life. But I did get my buddy a shirt. He's paying me back. I'm, pff, everything is expensive in the playoffs. He's paying me back. And then this was the shirt on all our seats. You got Boston. Because all these fans across the league are like, we want Boston. Well, you got Boston now. Let's see how that works. And then these were the game posters for last night. Jalen Brown, beautiful. Beautiful. Anyways, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. The Boston Celtics are up 1-0. Let's see how Dallas were Matt Dallas. Yes, let's see how Dallas. What was I going to say? Let's see how Dallas responds words. Let's see how Dallas responds in game two. See y'all very soon. Like always, peace out.